Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Bob Morris, Professor of Biology at Wheaton College in Massachusetts, and welcome to another episode of Science with Dr. Bob. You know, how many times have you heard people say, it's a hot one today? Well, you've actually probably heard that more often in recent times than you have in, old, in, uh, in past times because the world is getting hotter. And that's a matter of climate change. We have a lot of evidence uh, to explain climate change and, and our best evidence suggests that it's because of a process called global warming. Climate is always changing, but right now it's changing faster than it's ever changed in history. It's actually changed, the temperatures are rising, global temperatures are rising, 10 times faster than at the end of the last ice age. So climate change is normal, but this is an abnormal rate of climate change. And the best evidence suggests that that's due to a process called the greenhouse effect. So, you may have heard about that before, and we've got an experiment today about that greenhouse effect. So what is the greenhouse effect? Well, it's wonderful. The greenhouse effect is why we're here on Earth. It's why life can live on Earth. It is a process by which the atmosphere around the Earth traps just the right amount of heat coming from the sun. So the, we're getting our solar radiation from the sun. It warms the Earth and the short wavelengths of light pass through the atmosphere and pass through the gases that make up the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is actually mostly nitrogen and oxygen, but there are other gases mixed with those in trace amounts. Carbon dioxide and methane and water vapor are three of those, and those are all greenhouse gases. So as that light passes through the atmosphere, short wavelengths, they go right through methane and carbon dioxide and water vapor. But that warms the Earth. And then as the Earth warms up, it re-radiates the, the light. It actually radiates longer wavelengths of now infrared light, and those can't get through the carbon dioxide and water vapor and methane. So that creates what's called a greenhouse effect, where Sunlight comes in, but not all of the warmth can get back out. And in a greenhouse, that happens because of the glass. But in the Earth, it happens because of the atmosphere. So the problem is we have, in our Earth, just the right mixture of nitrogen and oxygen and greenhouse gases and some other gases to give us the comfortable climate that we have evolved in and that we've had for millions of years. But climate always changes gradually. What's the difference between climate and weather? Well, climate is the gradual changes of weather over time. Weather like rain and sun, those are day-to-day -day events that you can see when you go outside. But average them over time, and that's what climate is. So one storm doesn't tell us about our climate, but many averaged uh, changes of weather tell us what, how the climate is changing. That's how we know the climate is actually changing. So we can do an experiment at home that actually tests the greenhouse effect. So, so let's do an experiment. Um, what I have set up here is, is an apparatus with a heat lamp that's meant to imitate the sun and two Earths. Now we don't have two Earths, we only have one, but for this experiment we're gonna have one Earth with, that's with air trapped around the globe. And the way you set this experiment up is to get a heat lamp and two glass containers that have an object inside that can be warmed. And in this case, we've got a globe on the inside and there's just a little bit of rice and to hold the globe up straight. And then you need two thermometers. I've run a th one thermometer into this side and another thermometer into this side. You can also do it with just one container and just do it twice. So now I have run two thermometers in. I put the thermometer probes on opposite sides of these globes away from the heat lamp. And now I've, and I've set them up so that I can have two experimental planets and two experimental containers. But I, what I need to do is add extra carbon dioxide to one. That's what I'm gonna do with the vinegar and the, and the baking soda. Very easy to make carbon dioxide. I've got one tablespoon of baking soda in this bottle and, about, and, and uh, 200 mils of vinegar, uh, about a cup. And then I'm just gonna pour this, carbon, uh, pour this vinegar into the carbon dioxide and then just pour the gas into this first container. So 
pour it in really quickly. There comes all the carbon dioxide. Da, 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 da. And then I stir that up. And now I'm going to pour just the gas, not the liquid, just the gas. A couple dribbles on the outside of the container. I'm, getting the, I'm squeezing out the gas. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So as I pour this, it's just the gas that's going in to that container. And we still need to test that. So to be sure that we have carbon dioxide in that container, uh, if there were, if there is uh, just air in the container, I can take a match and put it in the container and it will continue to burn because of the oxygen. But if I put it into a container that contains mostly carbon dioxide, that'll snuff the match out because it's mostly CO2. So now I'm going to set up the, con the, the container and pause a moment while I set these up as, as similarly as possible. You need to run this uh, uh, experiment a few times uh, to make sure that you believe the data. Experiments are believable, because or science is believable, because science is repeatable. So we'll do it run once today, and I've set it up as close as I can to being identical. I've measured the distance from the bulb to the planets. I've tried to get the bulb straight. Uh, and we're going to put, car we'll put carbon dioxide in one container, and now we're going to turn on the lamp to imitate the sun. So remember, this is the extra carbon dioxide side there. And now we have air with extra CO2 here. And now we just give it some time. And so we'll, we'll make a note of our starting temperatures, 74.8, 75.0, 74.8, There's our starting conditions. And we'll come back in a few moments and see how the experiment runs. OK. Welcome back. Uh, we've gone about we've gone ten minutes since that uh, since the pause in recording, and I'm just going to check our data now. Uh, Seventy-eight point eight, seventy-eight point eight on the air side, and eighty point one, eighty point one on the extra CO two side. So that's given us. Four degree change on air and a 5.1 degree change in the extra CO2. So there's our evidence, uh, and you can try this at home. I'd suggest that you do because science needs to be repeatable to be believable. And the most, the best skeptic for scientific evidence is the scientist who does the experiment themselves. So when I've run this before, and I've done it a dozen or more times, I will switch the container that has the CO2. I'll run it multiple times with the same container, sometimes with CO2, sometimes without. You saw that actually when we began, one, one, uh, the side with the extra CO2 began warmer than the side with plain air. That's because of the conditions here in the studio. I'm going to turn this off so my globes don't melt. And we saw that um, with the initial conditions different, this already a little bit warmer, it's gotten much, much warmer than, the, than, our, uh, than our air alone. So there's a simple experiment that you can try yourself to, to test that effect of increasing a carbon dioxide concentration and seeing how it helps to trap heat that gets into a system. Now, there's much more complexity in our planet than there is in this simple system. We have no glass around the Earth. Um, we have, but we do around this system. We have uh, some what's called heat capacity going on here, where the CO2 retains heat in, a, in, uh, in perhaps more than the air. We'll have to control for that experiment. But with as many conditions possibly kept the same as we could, we still see that when you warm, a, when you uh, shine light onto a system with CO2, we get a more retention of, of air and, or I'm sorry, more retention of, of, the, of that uh, higher wavelength uh, trapped energy 
being re-radiated as longer wavelength infrared energy and the greenhouse effect you can see in a bottle. Now, that's important for us to consider because we're running this experiment right now, except it's not on a, a spare planet. It's on the one we live in and the one that we breathe, the, the atmosphere we breathe in. So if we like the climate that we've had with the, the frequency of storms that we're used to, and we want to avoid a climate where summers are much hotter and wildfires more common and, and hurricanes and, and uh, severe storms more common, well then maybe we should, I'd say probably, we should try a new experiment. Let's try that new experiment. So we've added carbon dioxide through burning of fossil fuels to our atmosphere and we've gotten the results that we are seeing warmer climates and we're seeing more energy in the systems and more severe storms and, and more wildfires, more droughts, more floods. How about we level off those greenhouse gases? If we try an experiment where we're adding fewer greenhouse gases to the atmosphere with fewer uh, fossil fuels being burned and more renewable energies to just slow that rate of greenhouse gas increase, we can keep that climate from changing in as fast a way as it's been occurring in the, in, in the recent times. So with uh, that explanation of greenhouse gases in a bottle, you could try that experiment yourself and, and we can try an experiment with our planet, leveling out those greenhouse gases and, and slowing climate change. So until next time, this is Science with Dr. Bob. For more information about climate change, come to sciencewithdrbob.com and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep on experimenting.